in this video, I'm going to be doing something I haven't done since I was a little kid. Do you guys remember those colour by numbers books where you'd fill in the different sections depending on what number was in it? Well, I went to a post office recently and came across this monstrosity of a book. It is absolutely massive. The pages inside are super detailed. So it's a bit of a step up from some of the ones I did as a little kid and I'm really excited to see what I can do with this. I'm going to be colouring one of these pages and you guys try and guess who the character is. They're all portraits. See how early you can figure out who it is I'm drawing. Let's jump in. Wait! Before we jump into that, I want to quickly thank my new patrons who have supported me over on my new Patreon page. Thank you guys so much. I'll chuck your names up here. I really appreciate the support. And if any of you guys watching want to help me continue to make free YouTube videos, you can support me over there. You'll also get some extra content. There's some sketch videos and I'll be releasing more creepypasta stories over on my Patreon. Patreon. Damn it, I'm not good at this. But anyway, let's jump into the video. Enjoy. Quirkles, a puzzling colour by numbers book. Reveal the hidden faces within the circles. You must find the secrets within. Alright, let's settle down a little bit. I'm getting a bit too hyped up. I like this type of thing. It reminds me of my childhood doing these fun colouring books. So there's a couple of tips in here talking about how you can do cross hatching or use different colours. But we don't read the instructions here, okay? We do it our way. Which happens to be the same way as they suggested in the book. But that's not the point. It's my way. Oh god, look at all the details. This is going to be a lot of work. The good thing about this book is you can actually pull out each page, which really helps for filming this because the book is massive. Having a tripod set up above it wasn't very practical. Anyway, the book suggests you use five colours. There's five numbers. Five colours makes sense. All right, book, I'll listen to you this time. My original plan was to go with these highlighter pens. I thought it'd be cool. They're fluoro. They make an impact. But then I realised the tip on them is way too big. <coughs> That's what she said. More just it's all proportionally big. I'm getting off track. It's too big for the details in this artwork. There's tiny details, big fluoro pens, not gonna work. So instead, I've got these little stablio. Stablo? Stablo pens, if that's how you pronounce it. Happens to be the same brand, both fluoro, but with a much finer tip, which will enable me to get into the small places and fill in that detail. The flip side, which I soon found out, colouring the big areas was a bit of a nightmare. But hey, this isn't a kid's colouring book. This is an adult colouring book. It's not meant to be fun. It's about numbing your brain from the monotonous life you currently live. It's not a kid's book. No more fun. You've grown out of that, okay? Now hurry the f*** up and colour in the damn circles. You've only got another 20,552 circles to go. Why are you acting like this isn't fun? Get to it. Let's get a music time lapse going and I'll get back to you guys when we finish stage one of colouring the blue. And I'm back with stage one complete. It was at this time which I could tell who the person was. I probably have a better view of it than what you guys do just from the video. Maybe some of you guys have guessed it or some of you guys probably don't even know who it is. Some of the younger people. But now it is time to use the purple stage two. There's definitely an OCD trigger warning <laughs> for some people here. I'm not filling in every circle perfectly when I started this artwork, I realised very quickly 
that that was going to take way too long with these fine pens that I have. It's really hard not to show the pen strokes without taking a ridiculous amount of time to do this artwork. And I didn't want to be spinning around the paper too much, trying to get the best angle for my wrist, which really helps when you're trying to colour in a circle perfectly. And besides, I kind of liked being able to see the strokes that gave it more character and made it more visually interesting. If you wanted a perfect blend, just scan the image and then fill it in with the paint bucket tool or something. I feel like that has way less life, so just being a bit carefree with it, having fun, doesn't matter if you go over the lines a little bit, that's not really the point, just fill in the circles as best as you can. It's allowed to be a bit rough and I think that kind of adds to the piece. That's what's really cool about traditional art. You can see how it's created if you look at it and it adds so much life to it. It's got a completely different feel to digital art. I love digital art as well, you can do some amazing stuff on there, but with traditional art, it's got a different feel to it, so I think you should embrace that instead of trying to make everything too rigid and perfect. Plus that gives us a good excuse to be terrible at colouring in. So just go with it. If you guys want to see me colour in some more pages from this book, let me know, leave a comment, a thumbs up, all of that stuff really helps. Maybe I'll try out some different markers, try out some different colour combinations, or do one with cross hatching. There's a bunch of different ways I can colour in these pages, so if you want to see that stuff, let me know. And subscribe, come on guys, subscribe to the channel. It'll be the best decision you've ever made in your entire life. No exaggeration. And we're up to stage three. We're slowly getting there, but getting there nonetheless. Let's put on some music, kick it into overdrive, and I'll chat with you guys at the next stage. Let's do it! We're done with the pink and it's time for some orange. The drawing process for filling in one of these pages is quite interesting. The first stages, you don't really have any idea how it's going to turn out. You start doing the dark first and you get a faint idea, so it's kind of fun seeing it slowly come together and you're kind of thinking in your head, who could this be? And then it starts getting more satisfying towards the end because you're filling in the little bits, the details are really starting to come out, and when you look at it from far away, you can really see who it's shaping up to be, and it's a lot of fun. So the whole process here, while it is a bit time consuming and monotonous, it's also a little bit relaxing. You can just put on a podcast or listen to some music and not think too hard about what you're doing. The closest thing I can compare it to is to doing a puzzle. It's literally like that, but you're filling in the puzzle pieces yourself instead of finding them jumbled around on the table. So if that sounds fun to you, I'd give one of these a shot. Plus, if you're in an artistic rut, or you're just someone who likes drawing things but doesn't really like thinking about what you have to draw, this is a perfect option to get your hand moving, get creating, without having to think too hard about what you're doing. Not every artwork you create has to be some meaningful, well thought out concept that you bring to life and it's just really creative, coming from your imagination. That stuff's cool, but colouring in one of these pages is also cool. At least, that's what I'm trying to tell myself. I spent like five hours on this thing. <laughs> also, what you learn from this page is the effectiveness of just five colours. There's no blending, it's just five flat colours and it shows the power of shadows. You created a whole portrait with five colours, that's pretty damn cool. And with that little nugget of wisdom, this video is coming to an end. If you haven't guessed it yet, the portrait is of Jim Morrison from The Doors. If you don't know who that is, go check him out. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, and if you even want to support me further than that, you're welcome to join me on Patreon. I've got a bunch of cool rewards over there. It's going to be growing over the next couple of weeks as I add more content. So if you want to support me at such an early stage, that would mean so much to me. 
and will help me to keep making free content for you guys here on YouTube. So thank you so much to all of you who have chosen to support me there. It really means a lot. And I will catch you guys next week in the next drawing video. I'll see you then. Bye.